Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering a 3D gunshot effect. Basically, the first thing we're going to do is have the guy hold up his gun finger, slow it down, and then we're going to have a 3D bullet zoom in or coming up close to the screen. We're going to get straight into it. Bow. Okay, so step number one, once you have the clip, you're going to be going over to where he lifts his hand and you're going to use the time stretch option to slow down the clip once he raises his hand. That's step one. Now on to step two. First thing you're gonna do is go over to where you slow down the clip and pre-compose it before anything. I'm gonna get into that later, but now you're gonna go right click, new, solid. Press okay. Control shift D to snip it down to the size. Cut the other part, go over to here and add element 3D. Now you need element 3D to even make this effect. If you can't afford it, that's fine. There's plenty of other ways of getting it, if you know what I mean. But if you don't want the hassle, then you can't really make the effect. So we're gonna go into element and now we're going to wait for it to load up. All right, so now my Element 3D is loaded up. It's looking blank, so I'm going to import and go over to the same model we used for the last video, the 9mm Luger. Then you're going to press Normalize Size. You're going to have this really plastic looking bullet, but now we're going to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to Presets. I've made my own little preset, so I'm going to drag and drop that. But if you don't have that, all you can do is go over to Physical, go down and use the Gold Texture. But there's also Pro Shaders 2, if you can find a way to get that. Go down to Metal, then you can go down to Metal Gold Dark, Dirty. There's so many options to choose from on this. So it just gives you plenty more options. So either way, it doesn't really matter. So the next thing we're going to do is, as you can notice, since I've applied the texture, the engraving on the back has disappeared. You're going to select the texture, go down to Normal Bump, and switch it out with the one that came with the pack that you downloaded. Now two folders should have appeared when you downloaded source and textures. You're going to go into the textures file and click this purple looking one. That's what we need for this effect. So you're going to press OK. Once you swap them over, turn up the normal bump to around, let's say, I don't know, 9800. And now the engravings are back in the thing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, all of that. You know how it goes. You want your videos looking nice? Come down here. Obviously, we need you to chat. We need you to talk to us, see where you want to go. Come on, bro. Let's help each other, man. Let's get it. But again, the bullet is still facing towards him. That's not how bullets work. So we're going to go into rotation. Then I'm going to rotate it to my liking now. Okay, guys, now it's time to animate the 3D bullet. So it's going to be coming forward. So what we're going to do is keyframe position X, Y, and Z. Press U so you get all the keyframes showing up. Now go to the end of the clip and press the Z button and just drag it up or down depending on your clip. I want it closer so I'm going to go into the minus numbers. After tweaking everything, this is what I've come up with. Now there's much more for us to do because this is looking stupid right now. So just highlight all of them and F9 to start with. Let's get into the keyframing now. First highlight all of them, go into the graph editor right click and make sure you're on speed graph highlight all of this side and drag it up until it's here just like this then i'm going to drag this side and drag it all the way to the end so you should have something looking like this now just a pretty neat curve like that so what it's going to do is going to, it's going to speed up at the start and slow down near the end all right so after applying the graph this is what it's looking like we still got a lot to work on, but I don't want it to stop here. So I'm going to drag this over and put the keyframes further over past when the clip ends. So that means it's still going to be moving by the time the clip finishes, if that makes sense. Next step is rotation. Once you've dragged it back, you're going to go over to here and then keyframe Z rotation. So based on my clip, I want it to start speeding up near the end. Once it reaches here, it would have slowed down, but I want majority of it to speed up fast when the bullet slows down midair. So that kind of gives it a nice little effect. So I want it to peak around there. So I'm gonna go to my rotation and crank it up to let's say 326, right, for example. So you have a spinning bullet now. It already looks cool, but there's a lot more we need to do. So I'm gonna highlight these two, go over to the graph editor and peak it. Cause I've already spoken about the graph editor in the last one. If you haven't already done so, make sure you go check that out. That will teach you everything you need to know about it. But as you can see, I've peaked it here. It's going to look like this now. Not bad, but now we need to do everything else. So let's start with the texturing. So we're going to go back onto the element 3D. We're going to go down to custom layers, custom texture maps. And remember when I told you to pre-compose the slow motion layer. 
now this is where it's going to come in handy so remember this is what it's called here young's whatever comp one if i'm going to go over to here go back down to my custom texture maps under custom layers go to layer one and click comp one now nothing's going to happen yet and that's fine so we're going to go up to scene set up again wait for it to load then you're going to go over to environment go down to the drop down menu and click custom layer one now it's looking black here but that's completely fine because when we go back into the video you can see the reflections are clearly working as you can see the shadows aren't making much sense right now because his jacket is on the other side of the bullet that doesn't make sense so what we're going to do is go all the way down on the element plugin render settings physical environment then rotate environment now let me adjust this to my liking you lot do the same I'm happy with how that's looking but i want to make it look a little bit more contrasty so i'm going to go over to exposure put the exposure up but then i'm also going to bring the gamma up as well because then that adds a bit of depth to it so it's brighter but then it's also got darker spots on it so now this is what my bullet's looking like so i'm already liking how that's looking but there's still a lot we need to do because first of all where is the bullet coming from you normally see a muzzle flash right so next thing we're going to do is add a muzzle flash now you can grab any muzzle flash from online, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's a muzzle flash, right? So I'm going to make it 3D and rotate it to about where his hand is facing, just to give it a little bit more depth than it already would have. Next, I'm going to drag it underneath the Element 3D layer so the bullet is clearly underneath it. Then I'm going to add a deep glow. I keep stressing to you lot about deep glow, man. Make sure you get it if you can. If you can't afford it, there's plenty of other ways to get it, if that makes sense. Once you've added your deep glow, I'm going to keyframe the exposure to about here. Press U, bring it back here and bring this back down to zero because smoke does not have glow, only the flash does. Now it's looking very generic right now, nothing special at all. They're still very jagged, not smooth at all. So let's fix that all right now. First, we'll start with the motion blur. Now, my favorite thing to use in After Effects is motion blur. I keep telling you a lot about this. First thing I'm going to do is go back down into render settings, then go all the way down to motion blur, change comp settings to on. Now, if you don't have the RSMB plugin, this will do just fine. But because I like RSMB so much, I'm going to add both RSMB and the normal motion blur. So it just gives it that more spinning effect, if that makes sense. Not bad, not bad at all. But there's a lot more we need to do still, so we're not done yet. Next thing you're going to do is go back over to the element layer and add deep glow. I told you a lot about deep glow, man. Undefeated. So I'm going to put the exposure down to give it a bit more realistic look. We don't want it too glow-ish, if that makes sense, but I'm still going to have it have a little bit of a shine. So after the glow, this is before and this is after. In my opinion, much better. So... I'm going to roll with that and the next thing we're going to do is start adding our adjustment layers. So Control alt y to add your adjustment layer, Control shift d to cut it, cut the other end off and now we're going to be adding a sapphire plugin so it's called s underscore flicker. Okay, if you don't have flicker, again there's plenty of ways to get these presets but if you can't afford it or don't want to go through the hassle of getting it other ways, you can always just use brightness and contrast and just keyframe it up and down. It's a lot of hassle, so I do recommend getting this. Next thing I'm gonna do is load a preset up and wait for it to load. Now, after scrolling through all of them, I've come to the conclusion that Lightning is the best one out of all of them for our specific clip here. So I'm gonna load that up. Now that's on, I'm gonna be adding another adjustment layer with Control Alt Y, Control Shift D to cut it again. But this time we're gonna be dragging this one to around here now let me explain why because we're going to be adding another sapphire plugin called s shake next you're going to load up a preset after scrolling through all of them this is the one that suits our clip the best so i'm going to load that up now if you have no shake packs whatsoever or no sort of sapphire plugins you can always use the flash transition that i taught you a lot in one of my earlier videos that works just as well but the shake gives it a little bit more of a gunshot effect if that makes sense just makes it a lot better but if you gotta make do with what you have just use the flash transition by all means i used to do that a lot because the gunshot's really abrupt one thing i'm gonna do is add a keyframe on amplitude only go back a few frames and then stick it on zero okay now after that, I'm going to go over here until a bit further, if that makes sense. So you can have a look. So a bit further now and stick that down to zero. Okay. Then I'm going to easy ease all of these. And then also what I'm going to do 
let's trim this down to where our shake is now placed now what we're going to do is add a z distance so z distance here and then what you're going to do is on our end ones you're going to be adding one instead because one sets it back to its original zoom size if that makes sense if you put it to zero it's just going to be way too zoomed in so stick it on one on both sides and now you have an effect looking like this once you easy use these you lot i really like how this has turned out let's have another look yo that's the end of the video guys hope you lot enjoyed it make sure to drop a like comment and subscribe chat to me you lot man what do you want to see next drop a comment down below i'll see you guys later have a good night all day see you later